Bye. So today I'm taking the little 250 out on a bit of a shakedown run. I've got my rear rack from SRC Moto that I'm pretty happy with. And I've got my side panniers on. I've got a new rear tail bag on. And I'm taking some gear with me on this trip. It's going to be a little bit of a longer trip. Um, mostly road with some dirt thrown in. And going about 170 miles today. And this is going to be kind of the riding that I'm going to be doing more of. I'm doing the day trips. Uh, doing a little bit of trails, doing a little bit of dirt roads, uh, a little bit of road riding. But I don't plan on doing overnights as often as I used to, just because they're very time consuming. And, you know, I've got a family, I've got kids, and it's hard on my wife to have to do uh, you know, the kids all by herself on these overnight trips that I take. So I'm still going to do them with my friends and stuff. And I might do one or two solo trips a year. But I'm not going to do the, the number of them that I used to. It's going to be shorter trips from now on. Which is why I bought the smaller bike. So basically I left my house, drove to Brewer, got on Route 2 took it all the way up to Enfield and then I'm going to cut over to Duck Lake I made it to Enfield on about 133 miles on my tank uh, but the trip to Enfield took about half a tank um, yeah, I didn't start it full and right now I'm looking for a gas station because I think I'm getting a little low Got about one bar on my fuel gauge. It hasn't started blinking yet. I understand that when it starts blinking, you have about half a gallon left, which would be about uh, you know 30 to 35 miles. So I've got a little bit left in reserve, but I don't want to push it. I don't want to run out of gas anywhere. So. I think that's about as far as I would want to go would be about 140 miles. Which is what I've been assuming the tank can take since I bought the bike. This might be the slowest pump I've ever used, but I do manage to get it up to 1.9 gallons. So in reality, I had 0.8 gallons left in the tank. That's quite a bit.
so with fuel purchased and refreshments packed, I am putting in my final destination of Duck Lake. So after leaving Enfield, it takes about an hour to get to Duck Lake, and I couldn't be happier to see that sign, Pavement Ends. Here I am coming up to Jack's Snack Shack. This is a really popular ATV destination in this area. I've been by it a couple times and uh, happy to still see that they are doing well. It is not long before I find myself at the Duck Lake Campground. Uh, this area is kind of disappointing. The campsites are all in the woods, in behind the pond, and there's water access through this boat launch area. None of the campsites are actually on the lake. If I'm going camping, I want to camp on a lake. Or a stream, pond, some sort of water. I don't want to camp in the woods.
So from Duck Lake, it's actually not very far to get to Unknown Lake. And that's where I am right now. This is kind of a really cool area. There's kind of two lakes with a road that passes right in between them and campsites off of that road. It tends to be a little windy here because it's so open, but one of the downsides to it, but it is a really great area. And I just happened to find one campsite that is still available.
so now I'm on my way home. And with this trip just about over, there are a couple things that I feel are important to point out. One is, you cannot trust Google Maps. Google Maps has this entire area, or this entire road, as a passable road. With the addition of this ATV bridge, I would say this is an ATV trail. However, you wouldn't know that based on Google Maps. This isn't the only time that I've been wronged by Google Maps. Out on this same trip, it tried to have me go straight at an intersection where there was no straight. There was either left or right. So by sticking to my gut and going the direction that I thought was right, I made it to where I was going. But Google Maps thought that I was going the wrong direction many times. It tried to reroute me many times. And while it did end up getting me to my destination, which I had to applaud it for, it took a little bit of convincing to get it there. So that is definitely one thing to keep in mind if you're out on these back roads. Many of them have changed over the years. Google has gotten outdated or is using outdated information. They aren't always accurate. It was actually a really good ride home. I took a different route home than I took to get there. Um, so I basically went from Brewer to Enfield to Duck Lake to Unknown Lake and then I went straight down to Beddington and hit Route 9 to head home. The thing about Route 9 is that it is a little hilly and there are a lot of trucks that travel that route so there are a lot of passing lanes. And I gotta say with the little 250 I use these passing lanes because I was going very slow. This would be my first trip with the CRF 250 uh, with a little bit of gear on it. And I didn't bring my full gear loadout. Uh, I did not bring any extra clothes. I did not bring hardly anything for food. I didn't bring my sleeping bag, my sleeping pad, my sleeping pillow. Uh, I didn't bring my tent. And I also did not bring my chainsaw. So I've got a fair amount of weight left to put on this bike for my real camping trips. And I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge. Up and down these hills, my speed fluctuated quite a bit. Not because I wanted it to. I would like very much to be able to pick a speed, set the throttle, and just have the bike maintain it. But that's not really what you get on the little 250. This is a huge trade-off, because you're doing so great off-road, but the on-road does suffer quite a bit, and you end up having to manage your power a lot more. You manage your throttle, you manage your gear selection, you manage your speed, which all affects your fuel economy. It's all intertwined, and it all makes for just a little bit more things to think about as you're riding, rather than just riding. And it really isn't that big of a deal, except on the hills. The hills you really lose speed, especially the big hills, but even on slight inclines, where it's almost imperceptible, but in sixth gear, it just doesn't have the power to maintain, even on a slight grade. So you're down into fifth. You're up in the six to 7,000 um, RPM range, which starts to get a little buzzy. And it all makes for, you know, not, not a terrible ride. It's not undoable. It's just not as comfortable as some of the bigger bikes. And if I'm being honest, the speed limit on Route 9 is only 55. No, I can maintain 55. Granted, up the hills, at some points, I was full throttle. 
going up these hills in fourth gear. But if I really wanted to, and if the engine was broken in and I wanted to really rev it out, I could have gone down a gear. So 55 is doable. I had a little bit of trouble maintaining 60. And that probably would have been full throttle, topped out, up these hills, fully loaded. There's no way I can maintain 70. But then again, at that point, I'm way over the speed limit. I don't need to maintain 70. So long as the riders that I'm with have the same opinion. So while so far I've been praising the 250 for its off-road capabilities, I do have to give it a few knocks for the on-road cruising speed, cruising power, being able to maintain speed. It's just not there. But that's not why I bought it. And that said, this is just about it for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.